banks are choked in a way that uh, this uh, this is uh, over a period. So once we thought of uh, asking banks to fend for themselves, be viable, then banks have to choose what business they have to do. Then there is no more development banking, which we used to see way back in uh, 90s. There used to be a development banking where promoter can contribute 10%, 15 to 20% 20, 20 comes as a subsidy, balance comes as a loan, which has a reasonable uh, repayment period. And a loan in sometimes in two parts, which is a soft loan, comes at a single digit percentage, and balance loan, which comes at a higher percentage. These were the days uh, where the development banking was present, and many units today are uh, either aided by IDB, IDBIs, ICICIs, when they were institutions, and uh, even SIDB has helped many units uh, uh, find their uh, feet and then grow. But now, uh, banks have come to a situation where everyone is listed. And if you say uh, irregular accounting practices, I think these are most today in banks. Now, you can't trust a bank's balance sheet. Sorry to say in the stage. There, this is a pressure. So what I say is window dressing is a pressure of a situation which percolates into window dressing. So now banks are in such a position that because of the increase of NPAs, if there is a declaration of NPA of a particular asset, immediate quarterly result will be uh, negative, which they are unable to take. Then if they have to recapitalize the bank, government is not coming forward today. And any follow-on offering, it's very difficult uh, for the banks at the current momentum. So with all this, banks are in a, a very tight situation. And look at the units now. So the same, uh, this, the operative level of staff rate differently. They, so though uh, the percentage of default is pretty high in uh, uh, large companies, so most of the time default is attributed to SMEs because they are not well organized. And uh, so not being well organized is not just the promoter's intent. It is because SME has, doesn't have luxury sometimes of being well organized. You can't expect an SME to be well organized too, which is a reality. Let us say you have Basel norms, very strict norms came in. Now you say that bank uh, has to function in a particular way. Bank's capitalization has to be to this extent. And you have to be very strict in classifying the assets. But at the same time, when an SME gets its money after selling for six months, how can it cater to any kind of uh, rating systems that are prevalent in the country? It is impossible. You can maximum do two cycles with your working capital. You can't make four cycles as expected or anticipated, rather sometimes five cycles expected by banks. And all analysis parameters are based on those cycles. And I see it's a financial hypocrisy. And right at the beginning of uh, any SME starting an enterprise, taking a loan sanction letter, I know, I advise all my clients, have your own capital as a buffer. Whatever you got from finance from bank is not sufficient for you. So don't plan an enterprise with entirely your savings have some buffer because you need to chip in to save your own business over a period. So here comes the requirement of the capital, private capital. So now access for private capital has increased. Earlier businesses used to think I have to do business alone with my capital. Time but right. now partnering has increased. Time, time constraint. Sorry. Yeah. Partnering has increased. And with partnering and accessing external capital sources, which today is possible, I think we are in for better days. And I suggest lesser leverage and higher capitalization for SMEs, either by partnership or by getting equity from institutional players. Thank you.